morning. Foreign aid cuts look likely as US President Donald Trump aims to boost military spending by 10%. British officials are calling on their Malaysian counterparts to share evidence on the King Jong Nam attack. And the Naira makes gains on the dollar thanks to foreign exchange restrictions being relaxed by the central bank. We speak to the head of the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission to discuss the impact on the Nigerian economy. Now, thousands of people in South Sudan have emerged from the epicenter of a man-made famine, hoping to receive emergency deliveries of life-saving food. For months, uh, men have struggled to keep their families alive, spear fishing in nearby rivers and marshes, while their wives gather water lilies for food. People eat once a day if they're lucky, but at least in the swamps, they're safe from marauding soldiers. Uh, aid agencies have negotiated with government and rebel forces to establish a registration center in the village ahead of food deliveries. We are deploying rapid response mechanisms to these locations to provide food and nutrition assistance uh, to about 100,000 people that are living in a famine, uh, uh, that are under famine conditions. We will go every four to six weeks much more frequently than ever, but we will also be not only providing food and nutrition assistance, we will uh, go along with other agencies to ensure that we have an integrated approach. To Malaysia now, where British officials are calling on um, officials to share evidence on the King Jong Nam attack. British Ambassador Matthew Rycroft said information on the February 13 attack at Kuala Lumpur Airport that killed King Jong Nam should be sent to the United Nations for the prohibition of chemical weapons. Malaysia is a signatory to the Chemical Weapons Convention, which seeks to eliminate the use of toxic agents. U.S. President Donald Trump is seeking to boost defense spending by 10% in his proposed budget plan for 2018. The blueprint will increase defense spending by $54 billion, but seeks to recoup that sum through deep cuts elsewhere, including uh, foreign aid. Trump's plan leaves large welfare programs untouched, despite Republican calls for reform. The president has consulted government agencies about his plans and will present his budget to Congress in May. Well, time for a short break now, but do stay with us. I'll be right back with all the business news. Thinking of banking in Africa? Then think Zenith, one of the biggest in Nigeria, with assets over $16 billion. Listed among the 20 most influential brands in the world and winner of Best Bank in Corporate Governance. The most customer-focused bank in Nigeria. A success built on three foundations dedicated to people, technology, service. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. There is nothing as symbolic as a door. It shuts to protect you and opens to give you much more. Everyone wants to succeed, not just count pennies. When life gets tough, I remember a few things, difficulty and struggles, a part of what life brings. Your strength comes from the support around you. A true friend believes in what you do, there to hold your hand through any weather. I found my partner, and we walk through doors together. Diamond, your bank. Well, let's talk business now. And this past week has seen the Naira gain on the dollar, going from almost 550 Naira to the dollar to just 400 Naira to the dollar. It's a result of foreign exchange restrictions being uh, 
relaxed by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Um, this week, the Nigerian government opened a major international trade fair in the northern city of Kaduna, aimed at showcasing the country's investment potential to the world. It's part of the government's plan for tackling the recession and diversifying the economy, which is still heavily dependent on oil as its main source of revenue. A spokesman for the Nigerian government said the administration was committed to partnering with the private sector to speed up the transformation of the economy. Now, within the last few days, the government has announced that it's easing visa restrictions for foreign investors wishing to invest their money in the country. At the same time, the central bank has introduced a less restricted foreign exchange regime that would allow greater access to the movement of foreign currency. So what difference will all that make to many international investors who remain skeptical of the government's commitment to liberalize the Nigerian economy? Well, to help answer that question, I'm joined in the studio by Yewande Sadiku, the head of the Nigeria Investment Promotion Commission. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. So here you have the Naira strengthening considerably against the dollar, the Nigerian um, government proving that it can raise money through sale of euro bonds on the international market, millions of dollars being recovered through the government's anti-corruption whistleblower scheme. Does all that suggest that things are looking up for Nigeria economically, or is that just a temporary blip? <laughs> um, hopefully it's not a temporary blip. We think they're all, so they're all signs of several efforts by government at improving um, the conditions of operating in Nigeria and the experience of investors who come to Nigeria. But they're only a fraction of the reforms that um, are in the works uh, to see increased participation by investors, in my view, um, both foreign and domestically in the Nigerian economy. And of course, Nigeria eyeing another euro bond sale uh, of $500 million before the end of March. Is the perception in government circles that market conditions are currently favorable? I think it is. I think the market has spoken. Um, I think the reception that Nigeria received uh, when it issued the last euro bond is resounding proof of the fact that the markets are receptive to Nigeria. And might that optimism be dented, that confidence hurt by the continued uncertainty over the, some would say, unexplained medical leave and indefinite absence of President Buhari? Um, there are extensive prov uh, constitutional provisions for what should happen in the president's absence. I believe business and governance in Nigeria have continued in the president's absence. I believe the acting president is doing a good job. But we know that confidence is often affected where there is, when there's uncertainty. I mean, one of the reasons political, I mean, uh, foreign investors put their money in places is because of guarantees of political stability. Where there is a suggestion of political instability, and I'm not suggesting that there is political instability in Nigeria, but reading it as a foreign investor, does that concern you? I actually think foreign investors don't invest because of a guarantee of political stability, because nobody guarantees political stability. It's because of the perception and the expectation of political stability. And I don't see any concern with that in Nigeria. Right. As NIPC, we are not concerned about it. We don't see any reason to worry, because in the president's absence, the business of governance and the business of uh, commerce in Nigeria has carried on as normal. So just tell us from your perspective as the head of the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission uh, what the government is doing to step up its economic reforms enough to impress investors. Um, so last year the president uh, inaugurated the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council headed by um, the vice president with the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment as the um, vice chair. Um, that committee, that council, sorry, has been focused on um, improving the conditions for companies uh, and the experience of businesses operating in Nigeria. Right, but, but what is the strategy, the plan, the roadmap for attracting skeptical international investors to Nigeria? We hope that they will be persuaded by the reality of the reforms as they kick in. As you know, reforms take a while. Um, especially if you're working with a country as big and as complex as ours. Right. There are 10 initiatives that um, the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council has been focused on. There's a secretariat that works 
solely and independently on this and operates out of an IPC's office mm. that is headed by one of the vice president's um, special advisors on trade um, and investment and has a number of reform leaders from the public and private sectors. Do you have a headline figure that you're aiming for as far as foreign direct investment is concerned? Because Nigeria has roughly a six trillion naira budget, but it is a 100 trillion naira economy. So your job is to trigger and attract the rest of that 94, billion, uh, 94 trillion naira into, into this economy. I mean, how are you going to do that? Around 2012, 2013, Nigeria actually generated about $21 billion of foreign investment in portfolio invest both portfolio and direct investment. We're hoping that by 2019, we can restore Nigeria's portfolio, Nigeria's uh, investor participation, foreign investor participation to levels similar to that. But we also expect to encourage Nigerians to invest in Nigeria. Right. So historically, we've had a focus. In fact, we've had a focus almost exclusively on foreign direct investors. Mm. Increasingly now, you know, we are uh, bringing portfolio investors into the universe of our focus, but we're also focused on driving what I would call domestic direct investors, which is encouraging Nigerians to invest um, in their country. Mm. We that see a, a fair bit of Nigerian participation in the stock markets already, but we don't see as much um, when it comes to direct investments. Right. But that is a good focus, though. I mean, you, your critics, though, I mean, the government's critics say that by holding back from coming up with corrective sort of business-friendly policies for as long as you did. I mean, for six months, you know, this country didn't have a cabinet. Um, and therefore, you were providing little direct um, or comfort to those who play with the 94 trillion that you need to kind of fill the gap, that essentially you've shortchanged the Nigerian economy. Well, I mean, whatever happened in the past, in reality, it is in the past. The only thing we can do now is to focus on the future and the things that we will do in the future to improve business conditions, to improve the, investor, the experience of right. investors in Nigeria, and to encourage investors to continue to participate in Nigeria. And is the apparent gain on the dollar the result of, you know, central banks' policies, I mean, are those just market? I mean, that may not be directly your province, but we've got you here. Um, is that as a result of central bank policies and therefore government policies or just market forces acting independently? I think it was a number of things. The market reacted in relation to a new policy that the central bank uh, announced. So it wasn't just the central bank's policy alone. Right. It was also the market's reception to it. Right, okay. Now, th one of the things you've also done, which people have called for for a long time, is the easing of visa restrictions. Just tell us how that's going to work now. What difference? Because, I mean, you've had visa on arrival and all that sort of thing, and, and one of the big challenges people face is just getting a visa to come into Nigeria. 